what is up guys today i'm going to be going over how i planned my wgu program and how i finished the program in two terms um, i'll be showing you practical ways that i was able to plan and properly execute even with like everything i have going on with like school i mean wgu school with work with other things like other engagements that i have as well so i'm gonna go over all of those things in this video i'm also showing you how i use notion to plan that as well as you guys already know like notion is pretty much what i use for like planning and all of that stuff so i'm just gonna go over how you know everything worked out by the way i believe i've done a couple of videos on my channel uh, about wgu about various classes i did especially my first term my first term i was actually very meticulous with how i was documenting you know the various classes i was doing and how i passed the classes resources that helped me uh, but in my second term i wasn't as meticulous because i wasn't making as much content during the second term so i was really just focusing on getting school work done uh, rather than just like making any content in regards to any of my classes but in the next uh, coming like weeks or months i'll be making some videos about some classes that i think would be very valuable by the way i'll share the link to that playlist where i made all the videos about specific classes but anyways so i spent two terms at wgu i first First term was in July of 2021 and that was right after I was finishing up my community college program so I'd spent like a little over two years at the community college but I didn't really like actually graduate I just transferred my credits to WGU so started WGU July of 2021 did my first six months which is my first term from July 2021 to December 2021 and during this period I believe I might have completed about 30 something credits if I'm not mistaken I think 32 or so credits at the end of December and those classes were not in no particular order I completed introduction to IT which is very easy I completed applied probability and statistics emerging technologies business of IT applications the one that's the ITIL v4 that very boring class <laughs> I completed web development foundations and that was also like pretty intense class ethics and technology technical technical communication and a couple of other ones the AWS one as well the cloud operations one as well so I completed like a ton of classes in my first term and this was when I was still majoring in the bachelors of science and network operations and security and during that time i really was aiming for the aws certs that the program had as well as the ccna at that time but over time i kind of realized that i really i didn't really need a ccna especially with where i was planning to go my career so i didn't eventually do that but at the end of the first term which was july 2021 i actually went on a term break because i had to focus on like interviews i was doing so i was interviewing with aws and datadog at the time so i had to to kind of like put school on pause because it was just kind of like not it was too much work combining that with like working uh, with interviewing and study for interviews and stuff like that and i was also working full-time at the same time so it was a lot of work and, and i really wanted to focus on the interviews i was doing at that time so i pretty much just you know quit school temporarily focus on my interviews and like what was supposed to be a three-month break suddenly turned into a six-month break from january of 2022 to like july of 2022 which is this year um so i didn't i didn't do school for a whole six months and that's i mean it was a good experience because i had a lot of time to focus on work and focus on like other things but i was almost gonna drop out because i was just like at this point like school is no longer important like i don't really need like school anymore but i was convinced otherwise so so <laughs> I went back started again in july of 2022 which is this year and i'm going to show you exactly how i planned that out over the course of the last six months actually it was june 2022 so i started in june 2022 and i will show you how i actually planned out the rest of my classes over my final six month period and exactly how long it took me to pass each and every one of those classes so let me show you this page all right perfect so this is exactly how i planned the rest of my program like i mentioned before i'm sort of like a notion freak and i plan pretty much everything on notion so basically i listed out everything that i wanted to do every class that i had left in notion so i can track everything as i was doing it and divide it into status by the way if you are not familiar with notion i just recently did like uh, a whole tutorial on notion i will leave a link to it in the description as well it just goes over everything you need to know about notion pretty straightforward i pretty much divided it into like everything i needed to do left for my degree so basically like what classes how many credit units they were and then a tracking status for them so like um, i have one for 
not started, in progress, completed, failed, and then when I started the class and when I ended it and how long it actually took me. I also have like a summary of like how the class really was and also like a main Reddit page that I used to go back to for uh, guidance when I was studying for any of the classes. So this really helped me kind of have a visual understanding of what classes I was doing and what I had next to do. And I, I divided the classes into four stages. So I organized them according to like some difficulty and like some sort of like relation to one another. And so the first stage was these four classes. So that's stage one. Then stage two was these four classes. And stage three was these four classes, uh, which included my capstone. So kind of like stage stage three was like five classes, counting my capstone, I believe. Was it? One, two. Okay. So stage three was actually four classes, if you can count a capstone as, as a class. Then I also divided it into like the diff different course types. So there was one for like certification. Um, if it was a small project, a medium project, a large project, or an assessment. And most of the classes were like assessments. I think I had one certification and I had one large project, which was the the capstone project. I believe some other classes would have had like bigger projects because if I was doing the cloud degree, it would have had bigger projects as well, but I didn't eventually do that. So basically the first class I took was the critical thinking class. And this was an extremely easy class. And that's why I kind of took it first because like when you start classes, it's a good way to kind of like gain momentum with doing like easy classes and then you progress onwards to like hard classes. So as you can see here, the first couple of classes are like one day classes or nine days or 10 days, then two days, then 20 days, right? So the easier ones are, are very convenient to like build momentum and then like skill from there so this one was a pretty easy class it was just basically common sense right basically like it didn't really need much studying i watched a youtube video i believe i have like the reddit resources in the actual okay i don't have the reddit resources but it was just basically like watching a youtube video and that was pretty much it and i was pretty and i was done i took the oa the next day and I, I scored competent and that was pretty much it so i started this on june 22nd and finished it on june 23rd so it took me just about a, about a day 24 hours and the thing was my, my degree actually started late because of like some issues that we have with my transfer so i started my, my program in the middle of the term so in the middle of june instead of at the start of june because they like messed up like my transfer stuff but that didn't really stop me from like getting stuff done um, immediately i started and the next class was principles of management this was also a really easy class like the the, the cohorts are really good for the class i pretty much watched the, co the cohort in like two times speed and attempted the, the the performance attempt i watched the cohort in two times speed attempted the performance assessment and then i scored an exemplary in about 16 minutes of taking the, the assessment after that, I knew I was pretty much ready for the class, right? So I took the OA. The OA was a little harder, uh, but that's kind of expected. Sometimes the OA is harder than the PA, but I passed with a competence, so that was pretty good. So I finished that in about one day. Next was spreadsheets. Man, spreadsheets was a really interesting class because like you had to actually know how to use Excel to do this class. As a matter of fact, this was actually a project. This is more of a like a medium type project, right? Because you you had to actually do analysis using like multiple spreadsheets. It was actually practical which i kind of like i kind of like that wgu actually incorporates like practical stuff into some of their classes spreadsheets was was moderately easy it just took a lot of time to ramp up with understanding um how to how these different formulas work and also like not cramming them but also like you know memorizing them for the actual assessment because you couldn't use any external resources for the actual assessment so basically here it took me about two weeks to f uh, finish this class but it could have taken less time if i wasn't busier with work but everything that you need to pass this class is in the course study material so actually use the course study material and do all the exercises. So there's like study material that's like videos and labs that you can do for the Excel sheets and practice how to use spreadsheets. So make sure you do all of those. Then there's a pre-assessment there's a pre-assessment as well. And the pre-assessment is sort of a mirror of the objective assessments, right? So you actually go through the entire process of analyzing multiple spreadsheets and doing specific like financial data uh, calculations or whatever in the spreadsheets. So it's a sort of like mirror of what you should expect in the objective assessment. So make Make sure you do the PA like two or three times and you should pr pretty much be good. If you do the PA like two or three times, you're confident enough, then you should be able to take the OA and pass. It's, it's pretty much the same thing. Like the PA and the OA are ex exactly the same thing, just different numbers. It's just different numbers. So the PA and OA are exactly the same thing. So if you do the, the PA two or three times or four times and you understand how to do it over and over again, you should be good with the OA. Um, that class took me nine days in total. Uh, it could have taken me less, but you know, I had a lot of stuff I was, I was working at the time. So that was that. I started that one on July 14th and I finished on July 23rd.
do. The next one was the information systems management class. This one took me 10 days because I failed the PA uh, on my first attempt. So that's not the actual assessment, performance assessment, which is the pre-assessment. But the thing was like, I, I think I was a little overconfident with this one. But if you study the course material, you'll be good because a lot of it is just common sense. But like, if you have experience, you might want to lean on your experience to pass the exam, which might eventually lead to you failing it because it's not necessarily standard industry knowledge. It's it's textbook knowledge that you have to like know by the book. So like, if, if you don't answer the questions based of what's in the book or in the course, Course, then you're gonna fail the class so it has to be specific things in the course but it's really it's also really uh, boring as well so like bear that in mind and then after, after taking the course or reading the, through all the resources i watched all the cohort videos so cohort videos are really really good they're really beneficial if you want to like have a nice rundown of what to expect in, in the in the pa or the oa or whatever but those are really good like definitely watch those videos like multiple times i typically watch them like multiple times at like two times speed and then you know afterwards i attempt the pa again if i pass the pa I do better in the PA, then I go ahead and uh, attempt the OA. So this one, after I, I attempted the PA, my second attempt, I passed the OA af uh, immediately afterwards. So this took me about uh, 10 days, and that was between July 24th and August the 3rd. So this was the first stage. So the first stage was just like, you know, the pregame, right? So I was taking like pretty easy classes, as you can see here. Took one day class, one day class, nine days, 10 days, right? So pretty easy. Finished this in about june to august so just like less than, less than a month right so that was pretty um easy and the next stage was organizational behavior and leadership this was extremely easy this is also sort of like common sense right it's just like some some classes are just common sense like if you understand like common sense like you should be able to pass the class right all you have to do is just what i typically do is i just go ahead and attempt the oa first and foremost and then go ahead and, and see how i do then based on my performance and i go i then go ahead and attempt the the pa so this took me about about two days i took the oa the pa on the first day by the way pa is performance assessment which is supposed to be like your pre-game or like the assessment before the real assessment which is the objective assessment which is the oa so oa pa so i attended the pa on my first day but because i was kind of lacking i decided to go watch the cohorts once again the courts are really good and then once i was you know pretty competent i went ahead and scheduled the actual oa for the next day and i passed so it took me about two days for that one the next one is the business of it project management class man i have a lot of things to say about this class it's a certification class it's the comptia project plus and it's really 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 boring man i have a video where i talk about the comptia project plus it should be posted probably later next year or this year whenever you're watching the video but i go over the single resource you need to pass this class the cybex book by kim heldman i tried the pluralsight course by casey Harris. i tried the udemy course by joseph phillips it didn't work for me like i i, I did that it didn't work for me so i had to read the book and the book really helped me like stay on track and really like focus on you know all the important things i also had practice exams which really helped me understand the concepts as i was learning them and also a final practice exam that helped me understand better so it took me about 20 days for this particular course i believe i finished the book in about two weeks or so i just took a little bit of time for this one because i, I was really scared to like fail it because i've heard a ton of horror stories about this class and it, it really tortured me when i was taking it but I eventually passed it, but my one, my number one recommendation for this class is the book by uh, Kim Heldman. Like, just just read the book. Like, just read the book. To be honest, if you read a book, if you have the concentration to sit down and read the book for like two, three weeks, or even a month, you, you can definitely pass the exam. I found that watching the video content, like I could get distracted or like bored or tired. And this is coming from someone who solely, mostly uses video content to learn things. So that's my recommendation. Just read the book. So this class took me twenty days, and I was so glad when I was done with it. I was, I, I it was a celebration. <laughs> it took a total. It took a told me mentally to be honest but afterwards was the data management foundations class so this class is uh about sql so i was not previously familiar with sql before this class so i had to learn sql and i liked it because it forced me to learn sql and it was practical as well right so it wasn't like practical in the sense of like you know a practical uh final assessment but practical in the sense that you had to really know how to use sql in order to pass the class it wasn't like asking you questions that are not sql related actual questions were like sql statements that you had to like decipher in order to you know pass the, the exam so you had to really understand sql at least at a fundamental level so basics like you know select statements where statements just basic statements right so i used solo learn for this solo learn has like free sql training which is pretty good and it helps you really digest the basics of sql like practice it and use it against like you know imaginary databases to like query data and i was also starting to start learning how to use sql 
at work. To be honest, I've not really written like a much SQL at work. I pretty much just use other people's like queries or like just modify their queries. So, but it's kind of good because like I was able to kind of understand what I was looking at uh, compared to just not knowing at all, right? So I was able to kind of like, you know, apply that knowledge both for my education, but also at work. And so that was pretty good for me. So I, I thought it was very valuable to, to learn that. I also finished Caleb Curry's co uh, course on, on LinkedIn Learning. But the other thing that I used was uh, Caleb Curry's course course the LinkedIn learning course which is a pretty really really good course it goes over like the basics of SQL and it also has like a way by which you can practice which involves you like downloading like this SQL engine on your computer and also having like a access to like a data set you can use to practice like the SQL so this was pretty easy not gonna lie as much as I, I didn't know SQL but I understood it enough to like pass at least the, the foundations because like it was just foundations just basic SQL stuff right this was fun it took me about nine days I started on the first on September and finished on the 10th of September so like it was just very convenient to like finish within 10 days so not too bad at all after that was the more advanced one which is the data management applications man that one is a beast like that one's a beast i'm not gonna lie that one took me 21 days it was a lot because you have to learn like like sql and like database and data normalization in depth so it was just not it was not just like sql it was like data normalization like first normalization second normalization or first normal form i don't remember what those terms are but like actually normalizing like sql data also like like relations between different like entities or like data models like actually like knowing how to like manipulate like the actual database tables like insert statements and like different things like it was way in depth right so basically so i passed the oa on 30th of september because this has two assessments actually right so there's an oa and there's also a practical assessment right so you have the oa which is like multiple choice but you have a practical assessment where you have to actually actually normalize data set as well as also create like multiple SQL queries to fulfill certain requirements. So it was both objective and also like practical as well. So that was like really, really, really intense. So I passed the OA on like on 30th after like two days of procrastination. Then I started the PA on the 1st of October and it took me about eight hours to finish that because like it was really in depth. So I had to like spend a lot of time like normalizing the data and also drafting up the SQL query because it was a really, really long query I had to like draft up had joins when you when you start having joins in sql queries like it's different but <laughs> i pretty much submitted it and i got a return back because like i had like some some errors in my um, normalization so i fixed that immediately and then you know submitted that back uh but the biggest thing about this class is like it's not really hard it's just a lot of critical reasoning and methodical work and also figuring out the syntax is really the big challenge but you eventually figure it out as long as you spend a lot of time like learning the sql stuff if you spend time just practicing it you'll, you'll figure out like how to you know do the joins and all of that all that stuff also i I wish I did the PA before the OA because it would have been much easier. So the PA is, is in the um, performance assessment, I believe, where you actually had to, you know, do the actual practical stuff because like it would have really helped me better understand what I needed to pass the, the OA. But, you know, the first submission I had had just a single fix because the I had a relation between two tables that was supposed to be one to many instead of many to one. So I miss, missed that up in like one of the tables. But uh, after resub resubmission, I passed. So that was a really, really nice end to like stage two, right? Because like it was like it was like kind of a grand finale right i had this really complex class and i think it there's sort of a it, there's a sort of a pattern there i think where i have okay I, actually yeah so i have a part a pattern whereby i do like the hardest classes at the end of each stage right so this one took me the longest uh, in stage one which was information systems management and then in stage two this one took me the longest right because it was the hardest class right so i took two hard classes in this stage but you know i made it through the final stage i think this was the most mentally challenging one because it was like it's coming to an end there was like some levels of difficulty when it came to that right so the first thing i did was the finite math class this was very easy honestly i'm not a math person like i used to be really good at math like when i was younger i'm still kind of young but i should be like pretty decent at math not gonna lie but over time i just kind of like stopped liking it because i didn't like I, I stopped understanding it as i grew older like i failed my math class like three times in college that's why i couldn't do computer science so <laughs> i sort of have like a weird relationship with math but this was a very easy class like i saw the material and i was like like yeah i'm gonna finish this in one day i, I could have taken the assessment like on the same day but i didn't have a calculator because i gave my sister my calculator for college so if i had a calculator on that day i would have taken the class and like finished it on that very moment the moment i started it because it was so easy like so i don't think i'm gonna exaggerate when i say you could do mental math past this class i might be exaggerating or just pushing it a bit but this was really easy to be honest like it's not too bad it took me about one day because i had to borrow a calculator from a friend but honestly it's so easy to be honest i didn't have to study anything so that was an easy one once again a really light start to the to the 
final stage. Then the next one was web development applications. Man, this one was like a little different because you had to really understand like HTML, <laughs> CSS, HTML5, CSS, JavaScript, and a bunch of like web stuff. And web is not really my strong suit. The first time part of this class, which is the foundations, I failed the first attempt. That I mean that that goes that goes without saying. Like I'm not good at web stuff to be honest, right? Definitely something I want to get better at. Like later on in my career, I want to like web application security. But right now, like yeah, it beat me up. This class beat me up because <laughs> I failed my first attempt, right? So once you fail your first attempt of a class, sometimes like, it could be demoralizing. But I, I don't. I try not to let it like really you know hold me back. But the thing that was demoralizing about this was the fact that it was so close to the end of the term, and I knew that because I failed this class, I wasn't gonna be able to graduate with the november cohort right so, so there was a november graduation cohort that happened this year in was it i don't know where it was florida yeah it was, there was a november cohort and i was really hoping that at the rate at which, at which i was completing these classes i could finish in time to finish with the no november cohort and graduate and you know do all of that but i was unable to because of this class right this really this one really hurt me like this one like, it hurt me i was sad i was down bad fairly bad about this but i would say though from my experience don't be afraid to fail this exam on the first attempt the reason is because if you fail the first attempt the chances of you passing the second attempt are higher right if you put in the work even if you did nothing in the first attempt and you failed it the chances of you passing the second attempt is way higher because the instructor sends you resources that really really help you solidify that knowledge now i can't think of anything off of my head right now that is web related because like all of that information has gone poof but at that time the resources the instructor sent were enough like my instructor sent me a quizlet actually five quizlets that I, I used to practice. So for one, you can't actually take the second attempt until you show proof of your practicing of the quizlets. So if you don't practice those five quizlets, you cannot take the next attempt, right? So if you practice the five quizlets and you do very well in them, you understand everything's going on. There's also an assessment that instructor sends you to gauge how well you understand the concepts that you've learned from the quizlet before then approving for you to take the second attempt. So that's why I say, if you even fail the first attempt, the chances of you passing the second one are way higher because of how much effort you would need to put in to get approved past the second attempt so don't be afraid to fail the first attempt i was hurt but in hindsight it was all good so yeah definitely capitalize on you know the failure if you if you fail hopefully you don't fail but don't be afraid to fail that's my advice so that took me about 22 days probably this was the longest class for me after the project plus and the database one uh so that was like how how difficult it was for me the next was the user interface design this one was kind of interesting because it was sort of like a project based type of class actually i think this is more project place then it's like a medium type project so you have to like design some stuff i use powerpoint for mine if when you get to the class you would know what i mean but i use powerpoint for mine and it was kind of like a it was mostly creative work to be honest it was mundane very repetitive but i mean it's not really hard you just have to like be creative and follow the instructions like follow the rubric and you'll be good for every performance assessment that's like a take-home assessment where you have to like do anything with like a database or like with word or like with powerpoint just follow the rubric and you'll be totally fine if you follow the rubric there's no way you can go wrong like literally follow step by step like I, when i do my assessments i literally outline the rubric and then perform the specific tasks and then take out the questions afterwards and then join everything together that way like keeps me in check and in alignment with the rubric and that way i'm doing the right thing so this took me about 11 days i submitted the first task after seven days because i was procrastinating and then the task was sent back for revision on the same day then i resubmitted it for evaluation and then got passed in about like three hours the task two i submitted it on the 9th of november and then in about three days i was able to complete that in my first attempt so really really a straightforward class to be honest not really much there to be honest and by the way if anyone has any questions about these classes like leave a comment down below or just reach out to me i will be able to help you in ways that are not gonna like breach like you know confidential like educational information i'm not gonna like give you answers or whatever i'm just gonna like guide you through like whatever you need to do then finally is the capstone so this is like the biggest part of you know your education or like your, your degree program because it's like a accumulation of everything you've learned in your program so for me it was like i had to write a proposal like multiple things actually you have to write multiple things actually i think the first one is like uh, approval so you have to get your topic to be approved so you have to come up with like a really good topic that you can actually write about and then get that approved by your course instructor and then next is to then write a proposal and then post proposal something something whatever but it's just honestly 
it's just easy like if you're like writing like me I, I love writing like i love not writing but i love like like creating documentation like blogs or like documentation in general so like this was really really like easy for me because like i literally spent about between 48 and 72 hours in my room just working on this. i just ate snacks drank water and just like sat up for my computer and was just like trying to come up with ideas because i didn't want to leave my room until i was done with this i was like i'm gonna start this today and i'm going to finish it when i finish it and until i finish it i'm not gonna leave my room so i literally was in my room the whole time working on this and it was cool only because i like writing if it's anything else that's not writing like, i probably wouldn't do that but i like writing so like you know I, I was fine totally doing that so it was fine got my 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 proposal approved i didn't really get to many like you know resubmission attempts i think just one and i was pretty much good and essentially passed and got my uh graduation confetti yeah i got the confetti and that took me about 10 days and that was pretty much it so this is how i exactly i planned my uh program how long it took me and you know my thoughts on like the last couple of classes so i'll, I'll just kind of go over some things that i think were very very helpful when i was going through these classes let's see let's try and change this back to this so in terms of the things that were really helpful for me the number one thing was definitely reddit like reddit is your best friend with wgu like if you have any questions about anything on wgu just go on reddit and you're gonna find an answer like it might be outdated but there's gonna be some recent answers that are gonna help you reddit is like reddit is just like the best way then youtube is another one it's not really as good as reddit but you find you definitely find some videos on youtube that will be helpful then the discord as well definitely join the wg discord there's a ton of like good people who like answer questions and like point you in the right direction there's like a there's like a bunch of resources they have to kind of help you out with classes so and it's a bunch of like wgu alumni and current students there so it's people that you know actually are in wgu so they're very helpful with all that stuff so yeah that's really it but once again thank you so much for watching this video and once again big and huge proponent for wgu i'll probably be making more videos about wgu in the future maybe some classes i did and you know some other things that helped me through my program and my thoughts of w on wgu in general but that's really it that's all i really wanted to share but yeah if you're not subscribed yet definitely subscribe and yeah i'll see you in the next video or live stream